Hello Internet. So this is my first video of 2016. If you're watching this right now with me, then Happy New Year to you and all that. If you're in the process of leaving a comment saying, Thumbs up if you're watching this in 2020, then what is it like living in a world where Kanye West is president? And without me, after I met my tragic end, I hope everybody's really sad. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. So I was going to make a video over Christmas last year, sat right here reflecting on all of the crazy things that happened in my 2015. It was going to be really sentimental and deep and probably quite soppy, but I just couldn't do it. After everything that I did last year, I am just empty. I am like a dry crusty sponge that just needs some time to absorb liquid so that I- this is the most disgusting sentence I have ever said. So I thought fuck it and I've decided to do the complete opposite of that idea and upload a piece of trash with no meaning or importance whatsoever. Come with me on a journey through the last year of my life in memes. As you all know, my life is literally a complete joke and nobody understands this better than you, my wonderful audience who never fail to turn a funny or horrifyingly embarrassing incident that seems to happen quite frequently in my life into a cyberbullying campaign against me and today I would like to celebrate the creativity that goes into that shitposting by reliving some of the best Dan memes of 2015. Remember this? Never have I ever taken a photo of another YouTuber without them knowing. I have Wait, a, I don't believe you. No, I'm against that. Well, it turns out that was a lie. At a convention, Casper Lee thought it would be funny to secretly tweet a picture of me at a party. Thanks, Casper. Which started a public creep shot war between the two of us on Twitter, including this particularly incredible one that I took of Casper. Let's just Take a moment to appreciate that. But on the third day, I caught him as he was trying to take the photo of me, resulting in probably the only reaction image I hadn't already provided the internet. Ah! Let's look at some of the things this inspired. <laughs> okay, yep, sure, do you wanna lick that? Why did I say that? Okay, um, that's a good way to express your distaste towards something. That is, what, is that Phil's face from the background of the, f oh my God. And, yep. Okay, there we go. I, I think you all understand what this is now. Okay. Inspired by me realizing that I can unzip this weird jumper I have and put it over my head, I made a sketch in my opinions video where I was a nun. However, Phil tweeted a photo of me filming this with literally no context at all, and thus, Sister Daniel was born. <laughs> People seemed to really love Sister Dan blessing them in their lives. It inspired a lot of art and the worst pun I have ever- that is terrible. I like to think part of the appeal of this one was some irony. <laughs> one day I tweeted a picture I found on my phone which was an accidental selfie of me eating a sushi roll. <laughs> yep, uh, let's just say the less said about that one the better. I'm sure you can all imagine what the internet did with that. For April Fool's Day, me and Phil decided to make a new channel called Dan and Phil Crafts on which we uploaded a Square Flakes tutorial that had a very catchy slogan at the end. And remember kids, don't cry, CRAFT! And for about a month, every single comment section on the internet was just ruined with people spamming don't blank craft. And if you've seen someone saying, I'm crafting right now, yep, that was that was our fault too. In many ways, I truly feel like Dunnerful Crafts was the best video I uploaded last year, but by far the most hilarious thing about this was that over 100,000 of you actually subscribed to this April Fool's channel, meaning that YouTube had to actually send us a 100,000 subscriber silver plaque. What have we done? <laughs> Hashtag dick. The eternal bond that formed between me and Nick Jonas with this hug. You know none of those screams are for us, Phil. No, no, they're not. I mean, okay. Of all the people they could have made us present this award with, it had to be Nick, didn't it? This is just great for my self-esteem. And just... It's okay, Phil. Let's hug it out. Itself. We've actually had some good times together, but he is a pretty busy guy, you know, so I never got round to seeing him. That is, until one fateful day when he tweeted this. That is right, actual Nick Jonas 
called me his buddy and asked if I was around in London. Of course, it just so happened that on that exact day, I had taken a flight to Tokyo. I was in Japan when Nick Jonas asked if I was in my hometown. I want to be clear, to this day, I have no idea what he wanted. I have no idea, but I don't want to ask him because that would make me look weird and, you know, uh, I want to play it cool. Needless to say, all of you destroyed the entire internet again for about a month by spamming Hey Buddy You in London everywhere, including the comments on Nick Jonas's actual Instagram. Thanks, guys. I'm, I'm sure that helps me loads. I was on the cover of a teen magazine this year. Yeah, I don't know why either. Please stop. And you want to see how they made me look all cool and popular and stuff on the front cover? <laughs> yeah. Literally, I I don't fucking know either, okay? Like, literally, wh what the fuck? I honestly, I have, I have no, I don't even. And everybody thought it would be really funny to just reply to me with that picture whenever I posted anything on the internet. But joke's on you, as I then went and made it my Twitter profile picture for about two months. <laughs> I fell off a chair again, but this time, live on webcam, to about 20,000 people. Dan is kind of depressing to listen to. No, I'm- I'm inspiring! <laughs> I- oh god. I should have had a Red Bull before I came on and been frickin' zazzed. But then everyone would have- <sighs> Well, there we go. It turns out you- find my physical pain entertaining as well. So I innocently posted this selfie to the internet and people realize that if you zoom in really closely on my dimple, I have two little freckles that make it look like a sad face. For example, this. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Why would you swap them like that? Okay, oh, one's sad and the other's happy-ism. Okay, that's good to know. And uh, what's this here? And we thought we can't come all this way without showing you guys something, mm -hmm. so prepare for an extra special day in the life of Okay. <laughs> Thus adding my face to the list of things that have now been permanently ruined. One day me and Phil decided to go feed some horses and I shared this photo with the internet. There we go, look at that. What, what a nice photo. Everything is good, we're smart. Except, wait, wait, wait a minute. What the hell has happened to my right eyebrow? Enhance? What has happened to my eyebrow? I, t <laughs> I okay, right, right. It hasn't disappeared, okay? There is no obvious hair going over it. There's no light that's, ca it's just tiny. I have no explanation for this, okay? But needless to say, the internet was intrigued with this mystery as well. <laughs> Oh my god, there we go. Oh, there, there the eyebrow is going on some adventures around the world. There was no need to fix the situation by doing that. And Christ, that's just terrifying. <coughs> by popular request, Phil then shared some more photos of us actually feeding the horses, which as you can see was slightly horrifying. They had really slobbery tongues, okay? It was incredibly uncomfortable. And let's see what people, okay, you have a, a raging Pepe and there, oh, okay, that's funny. But. I hear you say, is that the only way people could ruin these images? <laughs> no. Then the face swapping morphs came in. Oh my god, that is absolutely horrifying. <laughs> that is nightmare material. Oh my god. And then the worst one. You can add Phil's face to that list of things that are permanently ruined. On a panel at VidCon, I revealed the truth behind myself and befriending your favorite internet stars. Stalk someone you really like and eventually you'll get through. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. You just gave that's the fact that I feel trash number one, and that's <laughs> And it turned out that this admission that I'm a stalker just cemented that in many ways, I am just a human dumpster. <laughs> yep, there I am in my true can form, all incredibly realistic depictions of myself. Oh, even in real life. Okay, and we even have a video apparently. Wait! Who are you? I'm Phil Trash number one. Also, Glozel twerked on me. Oh, 
I didn't consent to that, but there I was in front of thousands of people, so I just went along with it. We truly are YouTube's Nikki and Drake. Iconic. <laughs> Phil gave me this seven second challenge. <laughs> go, go, go. Uh, you gotta keep going, go, go, go. And the fact that I actually ran was just so compelling that it inspired all of this wonderful art. <laughs> yeah. There we go, all of those sonic references. Mm hmm, yep, look at me go. I think I've done more exercise in those memes than I've done in my actual life, to be honest. In various interviews this year, I have been asked how I met Phil, and I said that as he is my YouTube senpai, I asked him about a bunch of things, including editing tips. And whilst this may be technically true, we have established by now that I am actually just a giant stalker and thus the stupidest slash funniest euphemism ever was created. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Very funny, I admit it. This will never escape me. Remember Poot when somebody took this incredible photo of Demi Lovato and said that it was actually her twin sister that grew up living in a basement? Well, I would like to introduce you all to Doot. <laughs> I have no idea what that picture is or where it is from, but it is horrifying. And of course, when given a horrifying photo of me, the internet just ran with it and just made so many me. He was truly embraced by the people. He basically had his own fandom, including about 10 official parody accounts. Ah! <laughs> and just before I jump out of a window to close the year, we had a photo shoot for a magazine, and most of these photos were actually pretty cool, I would say. And then there was this one. <laughs> the story is the photographer was saying things like, try moving around a bit more, do some dynamic poses. Hey, why don't you try leaning on his shoulders? And Phil gave me this look like, um, I, I, I don't think we should do that. That's just not very us. It would make me feel a bit uncomfortable. And I was like, yes, I agree. This would look weird. It is not something we would do, but it would be kind of hilarious. You're welcome. And other than it looking like we were trying to join 21 Pilots or something, people thought it would be really funny to cut me out as if I was leaning on different people's shoulders. <laughs> And <laughs> Kanye, Nick Jonas, we have everyone that's important to me. I think by far the most spectacular thing about this is how impressive the Photoshop is. And there we have Donald Trump. Okay, okay, I am going mad. Let's stop. So there we go. That was an alternate way of looking back at my 2015. And whether it's all of the things that I made for you guys or you made because of me, at least we got to share this roller coaster together. Hmm? No regrets. Well. Okay. Whilst I get filled up with liquid or whatever the hell it was I said earlier, I am so sorry. You can click here if you haven't already to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And if you're not following me on any of my websites, then I will link down to them down there. And you should to join me on the adventure of all of the other things that happen throughout my life, which let's be honest, are probably gonna happen all the way through this year and the rest of time. <laughs> okay, bye.